Welcome to video number 15 in our minimum QuickBooks series, Credit Card Transactions. Credit card transactions are so, so simple to record in QuickBooks. They're exactly the same as bank account transactions. Use the register of the credit card account to record the transaction. Record all relevant information in the appropriate register and then check the results in the trial balance. For example, let's imagine on July 14, Holden charged a delivery with FedEx on his Capital One credit card for $100 and here's the slip number. No problem. It said Capital One credit card was the card he charged it on, so we opened that register. It said the date was July 14. Now the slip number goes in the reference field, and I believe the slip number was 12345, 12345, and the payee was FedEx. So we find FedEx. Now FedEx is the vendor, but the service which is the expense was delivery and the amount of charge I believe was a hundred dollars a hundred dollars now before we record this let's predict what the results will be in the trial balance As soon as I click record capital one will show up in the trial balance for the first time with a balance of a hundred dollars and delivery expense will increase before I save this delivery expense is uh, nothing is zero so they will both show up in the trial balance for the first time as a hundred dollars I click record now look at the trial balance capital one showed up for the first time as a hundred dollars and delivery expense showed up for the first time as a hundred dollars what about this one July 15th paid electric bill with Holden's Capital One credit card $250 slip number 778899 now before we do this let's try to predict what the results will be in the trial balance this transaction is $250 electric charged on Capital One well Capital One will increase by 250 and become 350 and electric expense Hmm, I could have sworn I saw it here before. Well, it's not here yet. And that means electric expense is going to show up for the first time on the trial balance as $250. So again, we open the Capital One credit card register. We change the date to July 15th. The reference number again was 778899 778899 the payee was Con Edison and the expense which is the service they provided was electric now again this is a charge so we put it in the charge column for two hundred fifty dollars now after we click record notice that both in the register and on the trial balance the balance of Capital One increased to three hundred fifty an electric expense showed up for the first time in the trial balance as $250. Now this next one is interesting. July 16, Holden charged a delivery, but this time it's with UPS for $200, and this time it's in Holden's Chase Freedom credit card account. And of course they give the slip number. Well, even though it's a different vendor, it's still the same service so the expense for the July 16th transaction should still be delivery expense so here in the trial balance delivery expense is only a hundred dollars but if we charge for another delivery that costs 200 that means that after we record this delivery expense will increase to a total of three hundred dollars and chase freedom will show up for the first time on the trial balance as two hundred dollars we open the chase freedom register we put the date of the charge which is july sixteenth i believe the charge was 
number 667788, and this time the payee was UPS. But even though it's a different vendor, it's still delivery expense, because that's the service. And the amount of the charge is $200. At the moment I click record, the results show up in the trial balance exactly as we expect. Chase Freedom showed up for the first time as $200, and delivery expense increased to $300. Now, let's pay down some of the credit cards. How about, on July 17, pay Capital One $50 with check number two from Holden's Chase bank account? Now you have two options on how you might want to record this. You could record it as a check in the Chase bank register, or you could record this as a payment in the Capital One register. It doesn't matter the result in both registers will be exactly the same. So, let's take a look at how we would like... I would like to record it in the Capital One Register as a payment, making the reference number the number of the check, check number one. So here's what I'm going to show you. Okay, We will open up the Capital One Register. We will put the date July 17. The reference number should be number two because that's the check number that we paid. Now Capital One should be on the list of vendors because they're also people whom we pay. And in addition to being people whom we pay, they're also the account. But in this case, the account is where the money is coming from. The money is coming to the Capital One credit card from Chase Bank. So, if it's coming from the Chase Bank account, you put Chase Bank account as the account. Now, this is a payment, and the amount of payment is $50. Notice the balance of Capital One decreased to 300 but the most interesting thing is, when we now open the Chase Bank Register, we see that the July 17th check number two to Capital One has been recorded in the Chase Bank Register as a payment as well. So if you put the two registers next to each other, you can see that in the Capital One Register we chose Chase Bank, but if you put this in the Chase Bank Register, the account you choose is Capital One, and the numbers adjust themselves accordingly. Now let's try some more challenging credit card transactions. How about July 18, Holden charged a new computer from Rex Repair on his Chase Freedom card for $850. Well, we know that the register he will use is the Chase Freedom card. And we know the date is July 18th. And the number on the slip was one again, one, two, three, four, five. An incredible coincidence. The payee was Rex Repair, but the biggest question is what account to choose. You see, when I chose Rex Repair, QuickBooks remembered that repair expense was associated with Rex Repair. However, in this particular transaction, we Rex did not give us a repair. In this particular transaction, Rex gave us an asset. So what we have to do is scroll up where it says asset. Now normally Rex gives us repair and the computer would be correct if it suggested repair expense. But on July 18th he did not give us a repair, he gave us an asset. So anything the owner buys that has value that you can use into the future is an asset. And this account asset is going to show up in the trial balance for the first time as $850. And the asset account is something your accountant who does your taxes is going to have to look through one by one anyway for any new asset that was purchased during the year. So when we click record, 
the balance goes up to 1,050. If we open the trial balance, we see that not only is the Chase Freedom up to 1,050, but the account called Assets, which is here, shows up for the first time in the trial balance as $850. What about this one? July 19, Holden paid his kid's dentist $400 from his business Capital One credit card. Well, we learned in a previous video that anytime something is paid from a business bank account, for non-business reasons, the account that goes in the transaction is withdrawals. So, we open up the Capital One Oh, wait, before we open the Capital One, notice withdrawals is 150. But withdrawals is going to increase by 400 and become 550. And of course, the balance of the Capital One credit card will increase to 700 because we're charging 400 more. We open up the Capital One register. We put July 19, reference number. Uh, well, let's leave it blank for now. The payee, now you could leave the payee blank, or you could put Renee the wife, or whoever you want. But notice, if you put Renee the wife as the payee, QuickBooks remembers, QuickBooks remembers that Holden's withdrawals goes with this vendor, and it will suggest this account. We happen to agree with it in this case, so we leave it as Holden's withdrawals, and it's a charge of $400. When we click record, the numbers are exactly what we expected. Capital One increased to 700, and Holden's withdrawals increased to $550. Now this last one is very important. July 20. Holden took a cash advance of $300 from his Chase Freedom credit card and they charged him a $15 fee. This one is important because the fee increases the balance of the credit card and they only give him $300, the other $15 is an expense. To be safe, you should treat this one as two separate transactions, one for the cash advance and another one for the fee. So, what will happen after we record this? Well, Chase Freedom will increase by the $300 cash plus the fee and become $1,365. Of course, bank fees will increase by $15 and become $35. And since the money is taken out as cash and we have to assume that it's taken for business, that means the business petty cash will show up for the first time on the trial balance as $300. Now, it said that we took the cash from the Chase Freedom, so we open the Chase Freedom register. And the date is July 20. The reference number, I believe, was, uh, let's see, well, the reference number was something, it's, 98765. Just trust me. Okay, reference number 98765. Now, you can leave the payee blank, but the money is coming from the Chase account to the petty cash account because this is what counts what cash we have. And of course, it's a charge because we're charging the cash advance on the Chase Freedom card. So now it will increase by 300. Click record. And now when we look on the trial balance, petty cash shows up for the first time as 300 and the balance of Chase Freedom has increased to 1350 But remember, we have to do another transaction for the $15 fee. Let's do that in the same register. Chase Freedom on the same date, July 20, okay, same reference number, so that will tell us it's part of the same transaction. But we will not put petty cash because this money did not go into petty cash the way this did. This is an expense, specifically bank fees. 
bank fees. We're basically charging a bank fee of $15, so that $15 increases our credit card balance. When we click record, the balance in, capital, in the Chase Freedom is exactly what we expected, both in the register and on the trial balance. Notice the bank fees increased to $35, and of course, uh, the petty cash didn't change by the fee, but that's how you would do that transaction. Now, you didn't think that we're going to let you leave without making a payment to the other credit card. July 21 paid $50 to Chase Freedom with check number two from the M&T bank account. Again, you could record it as a check in the M&T bank account, or you could record it as a payment in the Chase Freedom register. Let's do it the opposite way that we did before, just to prove that it's the same result. So this time we're going to open the M&T, or the T&M, whatever, bank account, put the date, and it's check number two. Now, the payee is Chase Freedom. Let's, we, you know, we could add a payee on the fly. Okay, I don't think that Chase Freedom is listed here, so you can just click Add New. It's a vendor, click OK, and type in Chase Freedom. And from now on, when you pay them, if you click OK here, they will be on the list. But the account that's that the money is coming to from the TNM Bank, it's coming to the Chase Freedom. And the amount of the payment is $50. So, in the TNM register, the money's coming from TNM to Chase Freedom. When we click record, we notice the TNM bank balance goes down. But if we open the Chase Freedom register, we see the exact same transaction written the exact same way, decreasing the Chase Freedom. So it doesn't matter which register you put it in, as long as you put it into the computer properly.